Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part two of the At The Gates interface tour. In this part, we're going to go through some of the other customization options that are available in the game, in addition to just some other features that are part of the interface that uh, aren't related to the tooltip spe system specifically. So uh, I think for this one, we will go ahead and start, uh, or well, not start, uh, actually resume a game. I have prepared, as you can see by the name, uh, that has a little bit more going on than was the case in the first video. So um, I guess the, a good place to start here, uh, kind of continuing where we left off with talking about uh, customizing your tool tips. Uh, another feature in, a, in the interface system that we kind of try to emphasize is the ability to set a, a dial for certain options instead of just a, a switch, like turn off or on. So um, one example is something that's actually been in the game for a little while. So if we open up the studying screen here, this is actually, uh, this is the full detail version of the screen. And uh, by default, it's actually, it doesn't show that it actually shows a lot less. So for example here, we've actually progressed a little bit in the game, so I guess maybe that <laughs> the first game that we started would have been a better example because then uh, you could see there were only you know, six buttons here instead of however many that we've kind of built our, our way up to. But uh, you can kind of, you can set whether you want to see you know, just what you can research right now, which is what the current mode is. If we click show more, it'll show the next tier up from that. So for example, we can uh, start studying honor here because we have hunters, uh, but we can't study, you know, priests or huntsmen yet. Uh, but we will be able to soon if we get honor. So, uh, or we can just show everything, and then you can see the entire tech tree, uh, which is a little intimidating for a lot of new players. So, try to kind of again filter things a little bit uh, by default, but give you the option to show everything or expand everything or get all the information if that's what you want. Uh, another example of this approach is with the grid. So if I uh, press the G key that uh, toggles the uh, the hex grid so you can actually see where all the tiles are. Um, the thing about a grid though is you know sometimes it's like well I can't really see the grid well enough or maybe it's just such a you know <laughs> dark dense grid that is just super distracting you don't like that. Well, we've actually added an option where you can kind of toggle or, or cycle through the, uh, the different types of grids. So if you press the one key right now, again, who knows if it'll stay that way, uh, then it will cycle through the three different types of grids and then back to off. So by default, we have this very faint grid, but if you want, you know, if you really like those nice, dark, heavy grids, uh, you know, we want to uh, make sure that you have that available as well. So. It's not that very. It's not hard to add, so it's just a matter of taking the time to do it. Um, another example of that is our usage of icons inside text. So, if we mouse over a tooltip over here, um, you can see that there's a there's a little icon next to gather here, and that indicates that it's a profession. It's kind of a placeholder probably right now, so you know might have a specific icon dedicated to gather, or we might do something different, I don't know. Um, but right now, this is what we have. It's the same you know, icon for pretty much all the professions. Um, or, well, specifically, this is, a, this is an icon that indicates that it's a, an active profession. Uh, you can see the little hex tile, and then the gear is our symbol for profession. In any case, um, you can actually change how icons are displayed here in text. So, Right now, obviously, all you can see is one. Let's see if we can find another example that might be a little bit better. So if we mouse over forests. Okay, there's a few more icons in here, so this might be a better example. So hill, brush, timber, and um, a bunch of concepts. Uh, so the concepts, again, are the ones with the red drop shadows. If you mouse over that, it just tells you, hey, this is what terrain is. Um, you might also notice the ones that have purple drop shadows. Those are actually ones that aren't quite, that I haven't written yet. <laughs> so. Uh, give them a slightly different one so you can tell and if you're playing you don't get trapped uh, but if you right click on anything that has an icon it will cycle the text icon mode so if i right click first 
and then it just closes everything right now. I might end up changing that. So by right clicking, I've switched it to full icon mode. So now every icon that's associated with all the concepts and everything is now visible. So uh, some people really like icons and you know this is kind of designed for them. Um, some people really hate icons and if you really hate icons then well we have you covered as well because you can then if you right click again and then we go back well I guess <laughs> actually uh, yeah this is not the this is not the mode that you want this is icons only and no text so you can see instead of the word timber it just has the little logs so this is probably you know could be a better fit for people that have played the game a lot and just kind of want to condense things as much as possible or um, it could also be a good fit for people that are more visual. Um, if you, you know, there's, there's kind of a divide between visual thinkers and abstract thinkers uh, when it comes to a lot of interface topics. So this is this is something where we're again trying to kind of work and 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 help both sides instead of just picking one or the other. Okay, so then this is the uh, this is the mode I was talking about a little bit ago, which is no icons at all. So you can see even in the uh, tile tooltip here, uh, those were all gone. This these ones are still here because. If we write that out, this tooltip would be like twice as wide, but um, you know, we might change that. I don't know. We'll see. Anything is possible. If I right click one more time, then that will take us back to where we were, which is uh, icons are used for um, object names, timber, you know, timber is a thing, hill is a thing, brush is a thing, um, and then concepts are don't have icons. So that's um, you know an ex also an example of how we want to make it possible to you know kind of turn things off if you don't like them. So if, you know icons uh, earlier during the um, uh, alpha testing process, there were some of our testers who just loved the icons and some people that hated them. So uh, it used to be set up where you know everything I was I added the icon system. I was really proud of it, and then everything had an icon next to it, and some people were like. It's a lot of icons, John. And after uh, after crying for a little bit, I uh, I could see where they were coming from, and then you know decided to you know kind of open things up a little bit so that you're not uh, trapped into my <laughs> my head, I guess. Um, and the uh, the tooltip uh, modules uh, panels that we talked about earlier, those are kind of the same thing. So it's like, well, you know, I don't need to know about force anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> um, something else that you can kind of turn on or off is um, flashing buttons. Like some people really hate that. That's really distracting for them. It's intended to grab your attention, um, but some people just it actually annoys them as opposed to just says, "Hey, you should pay attention to this." So you can you can kind of turn that off. I think there might be uh, a couple other places here where it's where it's used. I'm not sure I can find any right off the top of my head. Uh, but a another um, something else that you can turn on or off is I'll go ahead and tell all these people to go away. I'll just tell them to sleep. Right now, there's only a hotkey for that. Just something we'll be talking about soon, <laughs> but not yet. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go through all this stuff. Well, let's see. We can train somebody. We'll train somebody's a trapper. You, you will be a trapper for now. We have to study something. Um, gardening seems fun. I should spend more time outside. Okay, so now we can end the turn. And something else that uh, you've seen before probably is the, uh, the new turn banner there. So this is this is kind of something that um, was introduced originally in Civ Five. It was something I thought um, was a benefit for for a couple of reasons. Uh, for one, it uh, kind of gives you feedback as to the fact that the turn actually ended. Uh, sometimes when you're playing a turn-based game, a turn-based strategy game, and you hit end turn, it can be hard to tell whether the turn actually switched to a new one or not. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to make sure that it was just absolutely clear that, hey, you are entering a new turn. This is something that has happened. Um, it also kind of helps m give you a feeling like you're passing through time. So this is a game that takes place in 400 AD, and we 
want to evoke that theme as much as possible. So by seeing the date pop up and, and say, hey, you know, this is, this is something that, um, you know, you're passing through time. And it's especially important in At The Gates because uh, our game has seasons. So instead of just every turn being the same, what specific type of turn it is, is important as well. So let's show off a couple other things here. So this is the new caravan screen. It's not quite done yet. I don't know why those that text is not lined up. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> it's hard to enjoy uh, your own interface. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the kind of gold tinted buttons here are the ones that are on special. You know, stone and parchment are on special. Like if we mouse over parchment, for example, or, or stone, start with the top one. So you can see uh, this is a tooltip that's been partially converted over to the new system, but not completely. Uh, but at the top, it's talking about the special here, so it's not available. You know, this caravan is running out of stone. So it normally has stone, but not right now. Um, but the green text tells us, hey, you can earn profit for selling stone. So, uh, you know, more tooltip fun there. Um, and, and similar to the uh, studying screen, uh, you can show more or less in here. So by default, uh, it only shows you I guess the resources I've <laughs> handpicked uh, in, in part and resources that you have uh, that you can sell, you know, everything that you have will be visible here. So for example, sheep, you know, normally sheep don't appear because no sheep are for sale. Um, but if you want to see everything, you can. So it depends on you know, how much information you want available to you. Um, but yeah, so you can, uh, anyways, back to the new turn banner. <laughs> You can actually turn the banner off if you don't like it. So some people don't like it, but something else that's cool about the banner is that the color changes based on the uh, what month it is. So we have a color picked for each month, and so like, again, kind of gives you a feel for the passage of time and what part of the year it is. Um, you can also see this little sun at the top of the screen. If you mouse over that, it will uh, show you the turn um, and the date. So. That used to be part of a panel that was over here on the right, but it just was kind of, it was, it was filling up part of the screen, and I didn't think it was something that needed to be visible at all the time. But, you know, you can still get to it, and one other easier way, the way I usually like to do it, is if you hit control, picture me hitting control since you can't see my hand, uh, you can bring it up that way as well. So, um, if you just want a quick reference, like, oh, what turn is it? Oh, yeah. What month is it? Oh, yeah. Um, but speaking of things that you can turn on and off as well that kind of appear on the screen, the uh, notifications system over here is something that you can disable as well. Uh, and this is something else that uh, we first um, introduced, I guess, this, this form of in, uh, in Civ 5, uh, where you would have you know, a little icon that would come flying up and it would have a little summary on it and you can mouse over it and click it and do stuff. You know. But, you know, we've we kind of expanded on it a little bit in At The Gates, kind of similar with the new turn banner, you know, we kind of adapted it and built on top of what was, what was already there, what was already done. Um, and in this case, um, the idea is to kind of, I guess, we, we spend a lot of time tweaking the, <laughs> the slide animation, so it's... It shows up and at first is moving really quickly and then it slows down. So let's see if I can get another one here. This is, uh... All right. It's a problem with something that only happens when you end the turn. It's uh, hard to show. Um, let's see if we can get another one here. There we go. So it starts off and then because it's moving fast, you're like, oh, you see it. And then it slowly slides into its final resting place. Uh, and during that time, you can actually read it. So I spent a lot of time iterating on that, making sure that it could actually be visible uh, you know, for part of that and not hang around too long. So it's um, you know, kind of one of those gut feel things, to be perfectly honest, where um, you want it to work a certain way and you kind of just keep fiddling with it until you get there. Um, but the motion is actually a really important part of, of those notifications because uh, we actually had the system uh, in the past where it would just pop into existence. And even with this little summary text label, it, it, it was very possible to just not even see it and just keep playing, doing whatever you're doing. If you're you know, mousing over something here and something just pops in, 
it doesn't catch your eye nearly as much as something just like you know flying in from the edge so um, that's something that you know, kind of learns with Civ 5 and then I had to relearn I suppose uh, part of it was just building the system from scratch you know we didn't have that animation slide ability just to start with so um, let's see what else have we got here uh, so something else that you can uh, that you can turn off if you want is uh, the cursor coloring so uh, you may have noticed it already but the color of the cursor changes for over when you when you move the mouse over something that has a tooltip so if I move like right over here you know cursor stays the same color if I move it here that means there's a tooltip and then it appears so that's especially useful for different parts of um, the interface that may not be quite as obvious so if we uh, like mouse over this little plant thing here, you know, that doesn't have a highlighter or isn't, you know, a gold button or something. It's helpful in that sense, uh, but it's just kind of a, re a thing that reinforces how the system works. But if you don't like it, you can turn it off. That's another thing you can turn off. Uh, similarly, if, when, when a tooltip actually appears, uh, there's a little, you know, a little tap uh, sound effect that's played when the tooltip shows up. Some people don't like that. You can turn that off. Um, one other thing that you can turn off that um, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, right now is hotkey display. So if I, let's see, what is a good example of that on this screen? So, do, 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 do. well, one, one uh, potential example here is just the close button. So if I mouse over close here, you can see that a little, a little panel appears and this is the hotkey hit panel so calling it or I don't know whatever call it whatever you want uh, but basically if you mouse over something that has a hotkey it will show you what that hotkey is uh, additionally if you hold down alt it will show that so if you just want to see all the hotkeys that are available on the screen you can hold down alt um, obviously there's not a lot of hotkeys on the screen yet uh, that's something that we still have to add but you know, we're busy converting things over to the new system and, you know, things like close buttons on all these uh, screens were pretty easy, so, you know, this one has the same thing. Um, but some uh, screens or, I don't know, pop-ups can have multiple hotkeys. So, for example, escape will always close anything. Uh, but additionally, you can see it says spacebar here. So if I hit spacebar, it'll open and close it. So if I mouse over that button, it says, hey, this is, you can use spacebar, and then you can also use it to close it. So we also do the same thing with a lot of other screens. So the uh, study screen, you know, pretend I, you can see me hitting the F1 button. If I hit F1 again, it goes away. So that way you can kind of easily get in and out. So, you know, just ex another example to kind of polish work that we want to make sure that is you know present in Epic Gates. Uh, we want to make sure that when people are playing they're like oh yeah they really put a lot of thought into this and well we have so <laughs> hopefully hopefully that uh, that comes through if it doesn't then uh, you know I might have to go cry again but uh, the uh, so the hotkey display you know if you if you um, mouse over a button and it appears some people don't like seeing that so you can you can turn that off as well so it's gonna be more pertinent oh there we go we got a couple more hotkeys there as well oh, I don't, oh okay there we go yeah holding out all you can see all of them um, but as, as there's more and more buttons that end up with hotkeys then that will be that will un be more annoying for some people so you can make sure you can turn that off um, another kind of convenience thing that uh, we've added is uh, for camera movement. There's different ways to move the camera with the keyboard. You can use the arrow keys like you know most games. You can also use WASD, um, which is actually pretty much what I do all the time now, and in part because that allows me, a right-hander, to keep my hand on the mouse and then be clicking while also moving the camera. Um, we're also putting, we're, we're trying to make sure all the hotkeys um, are close to those WASD keys. So, for example, if I hit Z, you know, that'll put somebody to sleep. If I hit um, F, that will fortify them, that sort of thing. Uh, there's also an option to use I, J, K, L to move the camera. And that can be handy, you know, 
maybe if you're left-handed and you put your right hand there, you know, that's a little bit more comfortable than using WSD. Of course, you could just use the arrow keys, but, you know, depending on what your keyboard setup is, um, it could be useful in, in certain situations. But, again, just a little a little option that we're trying to think about different things. Um, for example, I use a, a wireless keyboard with a laptop, and the keyboard is much longer than the laptop, so I have to kind of, like, finagle it. And when I'm playtesting, using uh, IJKL is a lot more comfortable than those other two, but, you know may not be the case for everybody, but we want to make sure we have options, especially with uh, interface stuff. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, we talked about notifications. Oh, something else, yeah, I guess, uh, let's see if we can make it appear. Um, another feature is something I like to call floating text, and you can see the, the little icons that float up there. This is almost kind of like a, um, you know, a Facebook game or something where you know, your little, you're playing Farmville and your little farm like has little icons popping up and saying, hey, you're getting stuff. And I saw that and I was like, ooh, that's actually a pretty good idea. Um, it's especially helpful in a game where you're basically doing everything on a map because there's kind of two different layers. There's the layer of what's going on here and then there's a layer of what's going on over here, you know, the numbers, the, the crunchy stuff. Uh, and the floating text that uh, appears over a tile when you produce a resource or if you spend a resource uh, that kind of connects the abstract with the tangible in, and displays it in a visual way and um, not just a visual way but a spatial way so you can kind of see where it is and that's especially helpful when um, you know you, you want to be able to see if something's actually happening uh, if you build a farm, and this is the first time you're playing the game, you don't really know exactly what it's doing. You have an idea, maybe. Uh, but if you see, you know, a little wheat icon appear with a number, you're like, oh, okay, my wheat farm is doing something. Uh, it's also a good indicator of when things change. So maybe your wheat farm, um, it becomes winter, and then its tile turns cold, and it stops producing wheat. Well, the text stops floating, and then you're like, oh, I didn't see the text. I wonder what's going on there. So it kind of uh, highlights changes in the situation that you might not have otherwise noticed. Um, something else that we'll be adding uh, as part of that system is uh, move cost. So as you're moving your uh, your clans around, each tile that you move through, there'll be like a little uh, uh, piece of floating text that shows you when you know how much how many move points you're spending. Uh, because that's also something I've noticed that a lot of people get tripped up on is you know, move costs and what's the difference between a dense forest and a not dense forest and a hill and what, you know, all this stuff. So I can kind of just trying to bring things onto the map where you can see them and comprehend them better. Uh, let's see, there's a few other um, features that I want to show off here before wrapping up. Um, one cool thing that uh, I think I've talked about before, but um, maybe not is a note system. So there's actually three different kinds of notes available in the game. One is the, uh, just, what do I call it, note mode, strategic notes. Uh, and this is just like a little, a little list, a little panel that appears up here in the upper left corner. It's basically like a shopping list, you know, buy milk. And then if I just, you know, go about my merry way, I can play the game and then these notes will appear here. The, doesn't look great at the moment. <laughs> I actually hooked this up a fair while ago, but uh, you know it works. And you know if you press that, or if you hit the hotkey F5, that will toggle it so you can make it go away. So you can, you know, buy milk, buy cookies, and then turn that off, and then maybe go do something, and then you're like, oh yeah, what what did I need to buy again? Oh yeah, milk and cookies. Uh, you can also reorder things. You can get rid of cookies, just milk, because we don't want to get too fat. Um, so that's one one form of the note system. Uh, one other one is you can attach notes to clans. So let's say Bernie here is, uh, we want to attach a note to him. If we right click on, on the clan card for him, we can write a note. Beards are gross. And you can see, <laughs> it's like a little sticky note. And if we come back, 
Uh, if we click on it, we can change that. We can change the color, like if we want it to be a red background, uh, if we want it to be a purple background, you know, so you, you can categorize things by the discipline type. You can do it by, you know, like red means important, yellow means not as important, or, you know, however you want to do it. So, um, again, providing options is something that uh, is, is important to us. Uh, the third and final note um, system, or note, I don't know, whatever, note thing you can attach notes to is are tiles themselves. If you right click on a tile when nothing is selected, you can attach a note to that, and it works pretty much the same way as with the uh, clans. So, uh, let's see here, planes, oh plenty, there we go. So these are the planes o plenty, and similarly, if we want, to, uh, we can right-click it again, and then if we want, we can delete it, or we can uh, change the color. We can make it black, and I've also tried to provide a little bit of a gradient for of gray here because uh, gray shows up um, pretty well over most terrain types. But you know, so that's the note system. Um, you know, nothing. It's not core core feature of the game or the interface even, but it's. It's something that um, I think a lot of people will appreciate. I certainly have. I mean, that's kind of how a lot of stuff uh, comes into being. It's just I'm playtesting. I'm like, you know, I forgot what I was going to do with that clan. There should be a way to, like, attach something to him. And I'm like, well, I should just do that. I know how to program. This is my game. So I did. And, you know, now I'm happy. Until the next time I come up with something. <laughs> So, uh, let's see, what else we got here? I think we're getting close to the end. Um, yeah, I think that's probably about it for uh, this screen. So we kind of showed off uh, the tool tips and a lot of the different features. Um, uh, we kind of reorganized the uh, selection panel down here in the bottom left to be a little bit tighter and cleaner so it's not, it doesn't take up as much room. Um, let's see, is there anything else over here? Whoop. Tooltips! Just go ahead and talk about tooltips for another half hour. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everything down here you can see has that red drop shadow uh, and can be moused over. So, um, you know, like I said, we're kind of attached tooltips and, well, hotkeys as well soon uh, to everything to make sure that uh, you can kind of get everything you want. Alright, so I will go actually to exit the main menu and talk about one other thing that I think I may have mentioned in, uh, in an article somewhere but that is the uh, in-game patch notes system so in the upper right corner here you have a uh, button um, with a hotkey let it be known um, where if you click that whoop, there we go it's being fickle uh, it um, shows you you know, the patch notes, what, what's changed recently. So, um, you know, a lot of games do that. It's may not seem that special, but uh, there's uh, a couple special things about it. Uh, well, I guess one really special thing. One is that, uh, you know, we have things broken up into categories, make it very clear, okay, major features. You know, if you don't want to read through the entire list of notes, as most people probably don't, uh, you can just kind of see at the very top, you know, the most important things are you know, it's kind of ordered by priority. So major features, you know, trappers can now forage for either parchment or cloth. So that's a kind of a big change to the gameplay. So you kind of want to know that. Uh, major bugs fix, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's other stuff. Lots of stuff. Um, but the, the really cool thing about this system is that it uh, dynamically filters what it shows based on the last time that you played. So if you've all, if you last time you played out the gates was six months ago, it will only show you like major features and major bugs. If you haven't played for like two years, it'll just show major features like hey here are the really big things that have changed. Uh, if you played like you know a month ago, you know then it will show like major features and bugs and interface uh, and gameplay tweaks, but maybe not minor bugs fixed because well you know you probably don't care that much if you haven't played in a month. If you're playing every day, you know, you probably want to see <laughs> that sort of thing because it's more relevant to you. Um, so the, the patch notes will also appear, like if you play a new version, 
um, you know, they'll appear the first time you launch the game after that. So it's um, something that's kind of handy during playtesting, but also something I think people will kind of appreciate once we do release the game officially. Um, the last feature I kind of want to talk about is uh, localization. So this isn't something I can really show off in the video, uh, but we've uh, implemented a system under the hood to uh, allow the game to be translated in different languages. So obviously it's in English already, but uh, it will be possible to make it, you know, other languages. Uh, we don't actually have any official plans to make, uh, you know, internal official translations, uh, because that's a lot of work. Um, but one thing, at the very least, uh, modders will have access to the same tools that we have, uh, along with a lot of documentation. So if somebody just really wants to make a, I don't know, Gaelic version, they'll, they'll be able to. Um, and we try to make that as easy as possible, because, you know, that's just <laughs> something that I think is a, is a good thing. It's just kind of part of my soul. I'm just like, I gotta make everything easy to use and, and accessible and intuitive. So, um, you know, kind of, it's why uh, we spend a lot of time on the interface and, and a lot of these things. So, um, I guess the last thing I'll talk about uh, before wrapping up here is just a, a few of the things that uh, we have on the agenda for the interface. Uh, one is obviously to fix bugs. Uh, so, you know, we saw a couple uh, during the video here. Um, nothing major, but you know, there's always going to be a lot of stuff to fix. And that's something that's kind of been the bane of my existence like for the last month. It's just so many bugs with this system. Uh, I think we've just about got them all wrangled, but like the tooltip system and things overlapping over other things and yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a little tricky, but it seems to be in uh, full working order now. Um, there's also some things that uh, we've started converting over that we haven't completed yet, so uh, like the tooltips, for example. I guess I can go ahead and fire up another game here now that we don't need the patch notes um, in the main menu. Um, so, like the concepts, uh, let's see, doo -doo, I will show, so yeah, I talked about the, the purple drop shadow, okay. resource, to do, haven't written that one yet, starve, haven't written that one yet, it's fairly intuitive, but, you know, want to make sure, we tell people specifically what it does, uh, and then, already talked about hotkeys, uh, we need to attach more hotkeys to things, so we already have a, a decent number, but I kind of want there to be more, um, Another thing is uh, that we're working on converting over our tooltips. So I actually just moused over this this little guy here. Uh, this is one of the most gnarly ones that we have left. Uh, this is the uh, pop cap button, as I call it, and it kind of merges two different things: uh, how much of how much fame you have, and then how many clans you have, and that sort of thing. So we're gonna need to split that up and make it prettier, that sort of thing. Um, the resource stockpile labels over here as well. Uh, you can see, yeah, these are kind of old slide outs, not center aligned. Yeah, got some polished stuff to do. Um, let's see here. Like the um, tooltip for the clan card here. Oh, well, you can see <laughs> there's a bug there. Um, these are kind of the old style as well. And then um, in a couple places you'll see that uh, there's like tooltips that have a little black box. You know, those are also old style. Um, but, you know, just stuff we got to clean up. Um, in terms of things that need to just be added or replaced, like in the interface, you know, like art-wise, um, we'll want to, like the plan is to add, you know, some de decorative framing to things so it's not just completely stark, so the buttons aren't just completely floating in space. Um, you know, this looks a little weird over here. Uh, this panel is kind of dense looking, I don't like that, kind of want to do something about that. Um, there's still a couple placeholder buttons, like these are still using actually the old stone style buttons uh, with the new color, so <laughs> it's kind of a weird mashup, kind of in a weird transition period. Um, you know, something you've probably seen a lot of already is the, uh, the icons here for the clan traits in the corner. All of those are still placeholders. Um, and then something I'm thinking about is in the bottom left here, uh, whether or not we want to keep these uh, uh, command buttons as text or convert them over to icons or some hybrid solution. Um, seeing the text is nice because you're just like, oh, that's what that does. Uh, a lot of times in games you'll have action buttons or, you know, spells or whatever, and it's like, what in the hell is that icon? Especially if there's like 
20 of them and you're like I have no I don't even know what to click I don't even know what to mouse over this is too much so um, having text is kind of nice um, so it's also kind of symmetric with the opposite corner screen where there's a similar look so I don't know we'll see um, but something we'll be thinking about at least um, and you know just gonna be doing a lot of iteration um, polishing as we go um, making changes as we as we think we need to, but uh, the, the bulk of the work is definitely done now. Um, we've got an art style in place that uh, that we like a lot. Uh, colors are kind of coming together. That's something else, you know, our, our artists will probably be uh, tackling because I pick these colors, and uh, anytime I pick colors, they end up getting changed. So that will probably happen. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of good stuff in place. Uh, you know, we we've shown off a lot of it and you know it's looking good it's coming together uh, it's it's a very clean interface it's a very streamlined interface but it's also an interface that uh, opens a lot of doors to to experts as well it's not just okay well we're just gonna dumb everything down and make it easy uh, we're trying to think about what what experts will want to do as well what sorts of things will cater to them like collapsing these panels and turning off certain elements of the interface that might might frustrate them um, so we're, we're feeling really good uh, we kind of got a lot of bases covered um, we're uh, really excited to kind of get the game out there into people's hands because uh, it's one thing to uh, to see uh, the interface uh, but it's another to actually play it and you know when you're trying to learn and using these tool tips and uh, you know just how much easier it makes learning a game like like at the gates so uh, really can't wait until uh, we get out there but uh, st still quite a bit to do on on the other front so we got the we got the interface kind of in uh, in a really good place but uh, from here we're going to be looking at uh, stuff like uh, AI and diplomacy and victory conditions that sort of thing so it's uh, it's coming together though um, we're definitely coming up on the end uh, but uh, not quite there yet so uh, but anyways, that's about it for this time. Thanks again for watching, and um, yeah, make sure to check out um, the next video once we do end up posting it, and appreciate you guys uh, giving us a watch. Have a good one.